Small doses. Some help from the hip. Small doses. We're talking that shit. Small doses. And keeping it real. Small doses. With me and them seals. It's so funky. It's so funky. <laughs> All right, folks. Candy, you make me nervous. How? I think because you're an icon. Really? Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you. Yeah. That made me feel like you make me feel great. like I need to impress you. And I don't really be feeling like that about nobody. You are kidding me. I'm dead serious. Uh, I like I cleaned shocked. for you. What? Yes. I tidied up for you. We think Girl. you think we have a vegetable plate for anybody? That's for candy for us. <laughs> My man was like, "You need me any fruit? You need me any vegetables? What do you need me to do?" I was like, "I mean, it's candy. It's candy. We have to. We have to. We we have to have our act together." He was late. I was like, "Candy's coming. Candy's <laughs> coming, Jeremiah. You're not here, and Candy's gonna be here." This yeah, is, this is really cool. So I love it. Appreciate you coming to my. Although abode. they didn't offer me any water or anything. <laughs> it's here already. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm just messing with you. <laughs> I just told you I'm nervous. You're going to like, I eh, get you in your neck. I was just messing um, with you. Well, we are very happy to have you. Thank and you. And here at Small Doses, I was really surprised um, how many of like your fans were my fans when I did speak on it. Like oh, when wow. I, yeah, like when I went in the chat, like I was mm. really surprised about how many people were like, my worlds are converging, my yes. two faves. And so I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. I think it's kind of cool because we both kind of like say how we, how we feel and we don't really care what other people think about it. This is facts. I mean, mm. I care about how some people feel. It depends on the day. You do? Some why? days. You say why? Yeah, why? <sighs> Candy... This is what I do on the podcast. I flip it on people. Shady flips it on me oh, already. I'm sorry. <laughs> Shady flips it on me. Why? Why do I care about what some people feel? Um, I think because I'm a sensitive cancer. Oh. I'm just like hypersensitive. So Got some it. days it's like, eh, and then other days I'm like, go f yourself. <laughs> Please. Please. Yeah, well, I'm the Taurus. Oh, yeah. Or so Taurus you cancer combo. We are a click, yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. My um my biggest thing though, I feel like is that you are somebody who I think a lot of people you like you've entered their lives in different ways. Right. So right. like you were for some people, you enter their lives with real housewives. For some people you enter their lives uh, when you enter their with one of their with one of your candy products. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Bedroom candy. Yes. Bedroom candy. Um, but I think for a lot of us, you entered our lives with escape. Mm -hmm. And I don't think we get to talk enough about. Just like the actual experience of being in a girl group, like I was really trying to think, like what can I talk to Candy about that she hasn't already talked about? Like I'm not okay. interested in talking to you about Real Housewives. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm just this is fine. <laughs> I'm quite all right with it. <laughs> I'm just like, eh. And then I was like, okay, we can talk to you about business, but then that feels like a different podcast than Small Doses. Small Doses, we really like to get to the heart of things. Mm -hmm. We like to get to the root and. When we did speak on it, mm -hmm. there was one thing you said that stayed right here, right here. And you were like, oh, man, yeah. we doing this show with SWV and Escape, and we ain't had one conversation that didn't turn into an argument. Oh, right. Yeah. It, 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 it ended that way. We still, we never had one conversation through the entire filming. And I'm not talking about us and SWV together. I'm talking about just Escape by ourselves. We did not have one conversation throughout the filming that did not eventually turn into an argument. So I want to run it back. This here is side effects of a girl group dynamic. And not only, I don't want to just talk about like you in Escape because mm -hmm. you have been so uh, prolific with your work that you've worked with other incredibly massive girl groups. Right. Destiny Child, mm -hmm. CLC. Yes. Am I missing any? Um, I mean, those is no, the groups. I, I mean, I, I worked mean, with Black. Um, oh, you know, yeah, I did yeah. the whole Boom, a, um, the 808 remix. I did that boom, going like back to Kelly. Well, I did the remix version that was on Going Back to Cali, the one that... Okay, um, yes, correct. Yes. They didn't have a dance for that one. No. Okay. Well, I don't know, did they? I'm not <laughs> sure. But I work with a lot of groups, yeah. And so let's just start here. What makes a girl group work? Oof. I always I tried one time to figure out what makes a girl group not work. I I really hmm. put my thought into that one time because I was like, should I write a book about this? Because it seems oh. like every female group throughout history has broken up. 
not saying that they had to stay, you know, some they reunite, but pretty much every girl group has to take a break. I don't know. I'm, I'm any... right. Cause I'm thinking back to like the Supremes. Go-Go's. Go- yeah. Uh, you know. Wait, the go Okay, Wait, because I'm not. Even, even the, the white girls? girls? Yes, I'm saying all girl groups break up. So I was really like, I had did like, I probably should still do that. Like, just like study it and figure out why. I've even tried to put, like right now I'm in the process. I'm about to work with another girl group that I'm developing with. Shout out to Brendan and Natasha, but I'm developing a young girl group now. And I was like, maybe I should follow this process to see like, at what point does it go wrong? Case study. (laughs) Case study. Because I've worked with two girl groups prior that I was developing and getting them where they needed to be. They all broke up. But what was the thing? Like, I mean, when you think back, I, I mean, I think there are well, so well, before many we even get things. to that, like what made, what made you feel like this group should even come together in the first place? Was it just vocals? Like, did they have a look? Well, like, um, the, what the ones that I'm working with now, the girls that I'm, I'm about to well, work with. Well, the two that broke up, like, what was it that made you say like, okay, this should even be a girl. Group? Um, well, I love the fact similar to, you know, the group, my group is that all the girls, Sing, could sing lead like they all individually could sing okay and then they um harmonies and stuff were strong and you know and i just feel like yeah, like even now like i feel like it's a need for it it's there are no girl groups out right now period not from america there are some overseas but there are no girl groups in the u.s right I'm now. i'm mad that the first one that came to mind what? was danity kane and that's and they broke up they did break up <laughs> Netflix, call me. I'm, I need to do a special <laughs> <laughs> why girl groups can't stay together. But no, um, for whatever reason, I mean, whether it's ego, whether it's some, and a lot of groups have some of the same experiences, you know, um, that they blame things on, whether it's guys, you know, you know, different girls in groups sometimes end up dating the same guy, whether it's. Oh, dating the same guy. You know, I'm saying in certain groups you can pull that out. It's 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 happened in different groups. Damn. Um, it's happened That's where so close. no, but it happens. Then there are girl groups where it's like I said, the ego situation where it's always gonna be one that feel like they need to be solo, like always. <laughs> it's always gonna be one, and then um, but I feel like rarely is that one even really cut out for solo. Like, I feel like there's, there are situations. But what makes a person cut out for solo? Um, it's one thing to carry a load as one person versus as four. Like when you're, mm-hmm. and, and so carrying a load means like, not just like being out in mm-hmm. the front singing songs, but carrying the load of like press, mm-hmm. right? Carrying the load of like the negative. Yeah. It's one thing to like have all of it coming on you and have it uh, like, and have it coming on your group and y'all can, right. in my mind, y'all like, well, you never know that arms. until you split from your group. You get what I'm saying? Um, now contrary to what people believe, I didn't want to go solo. Okay. When I was in my group, I was not the one who went to leave first. So you heard it here <laughs> to be clear <laughs> because our group was falling apart. Then it ended up that I also had solo deal, but one of my other group members was the one that was going solo. So what was the reason you why was, you didn't want? Because you was giving me that look, and I was thinking I wanted you to know that it wasn't me. <laughs> I I can tell by your personality it wasn't you, because you're a very pragmatic person. I feel like you're a pragmatist. Like that's people who who run businesses are pragmatists. Like it's best okay. idea wins. Mm-hmm. And so it's like if you gonna have if you're gonna put a group together, then it's mm-hmm. like well why would we break this up? Like yeah. no this this is how I visioned it. I Let's was very dependent on my group. Um, you know when I was younger and in what way? And meaning like. I thought the world revolved around us being a group. I didn't really see myself outside of the group until I had to. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. But honestly, hindsight being what it is, I'm I'm so glad that she did decide that she wanted to go solo and that it did result in what it resulted in because it would have been a lot longer before I probably would have ever like branched out and started doing other things and it really kicked me into hustle mode, you know, meaning trying to write, you know, songs uh-huh. with different producers and yeah. all these things. Like, um, cause it was like a safe really space. helped me. <laughs> Does she know that? I don't know. I know they, um, they asked us about that in some of our interviews on the show. So I don't know what's going to end up being on the show, mm-hmm. but, um, I know that they said that me and Tiny both answered it both the same way. Like, actually, she did us a favor. At the time, though, we didn't realize it was a favor. 
we didn't realize it was a good thing. What did it feel like at the time? At the time, I felt like um, our world was ending. My world was ending, and I felt like she really was um, like like our bag up. Oh, I'm sorry. Can I curse? curse on you? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, I felt like she was our bag up at the time. I was very um, upset about it. I mean, at the time when it was actually happening, I had just bought my first house. And you know, when we say bought, we don't mean we paid it off cash. We mean we put money down and we got payments. Yeah. Which means that we, we still we need got that to money keep- to keep going. Yeah. <laughs> so um, we were like um, about to negotiate for the third album. And I'm thinking I'm about to get this big check. And yeah, it, 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 it just cut. Yeah, it changed a Did lot. Did y'all of see things. it coming? Not at that time. I mean, I'm not saying that I didn't think that people would want to go so right. so eventually. But um okay, so like during we were like touring on the second album or whatever after our second second album. And while we were on the tour, different people were saying dropping like, "Oh, she's about to go so. Oh, she's about to go so." Like from other groups that were on other artists, oh. their, their teams were, their people was telling us, I'm like, so we had like a group meeting and I'm like, yo, are you going solo? And she's like, well, no, but when I do decide, I'm going to let y'all know. And that was when I was like, er, hmm, what is, what is this? But the whole, it was a lot of things happening at that time. It was a lot of tension starting to build around that time. You get what I'm saying? So it was a lot of things, but um, I guess that's when it really started getting real. But see, we were told like, oh, you know, your first two albums went platinum, your third album's about, I mean, y'all need to get some big money for this album. So yeah. we all like, oh, we about to negotiate for some big money. Like, I didn't think it was happening at that point, no. What do you think made the tension, because you said there was a lot of different tension happening. Like, what do you feel like? We going that far back? Because it's still tension as adulthood, but go ahead. <laughs> well, because I'm really trying to get to the case study of like where does the turning point happen? Oh, well, it was so many things that happened that l- it led up to that point. That's what I'm saying. Like, do you think that um, she j- entered the group with the mindset of like eventually I'm gonna go solo? I, I, I wouldn't say that. I think that. Um, oh my gosh! Because I feel like it's fair to say that Destiny's say Child she, was wanna, created. Like, I'll put a name on it. it, it Tasha. Tasha. Okay. But at the time, I can't really say because, see, she was the oldest in the group. Oh. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, our group is based. We have two sisters in our group. Mm-hmm. And we have, um, that's Tamika and Tasha. Mm-hmm. And then we have me. And then you have Tiny. Mm-hmm. So we had so many different dynamics because, like, in our group, we do a majority rules vote type of thing. So it's like the two stick the two sisters were they sticking ride. together on everything <laughs> and then they all they had to do was get tiny and it's like three against one and so i always used to feel like they were against me all the time and that was when we were like young you know, you know like in first album right right you know right so you know we always had something that was like yeah a drama i don't really know what clicked for her but i did feel like um I feel like outside influences have a lot to do with things as well. And I definitely say that, and I've seen that happen in lots of other groups too, where it may be, we're going to say significant others come in and they start putting, dropping things in your head, mm. you know, making you feel like, well, I don't need them or, mm-hmm. you know, or, you know, just kind of like, separating themselves from the group, the rest of the group, you know, doing antagonizing. Yeah. Yeah, It was just like a lot of little things started happening. Um, a good thing. Um, I feel like, you know, as you grow, you change, but you know, she, you know, obviously people, when we first came out, you know, we were not necessarily supposed to be the cutest or the fine girls or whatever. We were supposed to be like the girls around the way. But at the time she also was, um, dealing with weight issues or whatever. Mm-hmm. And then she really started getting into her, you know, self and losing weight, which was a good thing. But then it was like more of an ego came with it too. <laughs> well, well, yeah. It started being like, I'm cute. Yeah, I want a separate dressing room. <laughs> I'm not doing this with y'all no more. I'm like, wait, whoa, wait a minute. <laughs> it was like all kind of stuff started happening. I can't really... 
it, it, it would be too much for me to try to dissect the entirety of our childhood. Like that's well, I think for a, a lot whole of TV folks, series. like we don't even think about it as like your childhood, but it really was your childhood. Yes, and that's what I try to get people to understand. Sometimes, like when our group, when we first got together, mm -hmm. I was fourteen years old. Like we met in high school. You know what I mean? I was right. a freshman. And um, when we got our record deal, I was in the 11th grade. Okay. okay? Mm -hmm. And then when we dropped our first single, it was the summer before my senior year. So I came into time. my senior year with a hit song on the radio with my group members. Tamika and Tasha had graduated from the school. So it was like, you know, everybody already kind of yeah. knew us. I'm still there, you know. Damn, and I didn't realize you were still in school. I was still in school. And so, like, when we would go do shows... And um, when we would come home, I still had to go to regular <laughs> school. <laughs> like, I had to do work on the road, turn it in. Yeah. The day of my graduation, they were pissed at me because I went home for my graduation when we had a show that day. And I almost made us miss the show because the flight didn't come in on time and they were I'm pissed. graduating. Yeah, yeah, I was like, I don't care what y'all say. Y'all, I'm going to this graduation. Who can I run to? I work I'm running to across the stage. That's I'm, I'm going to my graduation. Yes. But yeah, it was a thing. I just I marvel because I'm so used to being in like solo situations that I really like when mm -hmm. I was on the reel, it was like I was in a girl group and it, was, it is like being in a girl group. Like, yeah, <laughs> and it was that. like, what is this? Like mm -hmm. you have was, to care about other people's feelings. You have to care about other, what other people, you know, think and what they're going through. Um, you know, it's, it's not management. And when you have a group that cannot come on this, you know, get on the same page about like who's managing you who's working it's like mm. that is a battle in itself like that's those are the things that we go through as, as adults because we're all for you know business women or whatever of course we all want you know we feel like we know what we need to do for ourselves or whatever but we then we may not agree about you know who, the manager oh, or yeah. the business manager and like for me i've been feeling like oh, lord i'm gonna let them tell me what to do <laughs> Cause it's like if I get outvoted, and I gotta go along with what I feel like, it's like this is some like they don't know what the. They I was gonna do. say like so in the group, <laughs> isn't it clear though that like okay, this person knows more about this, this person knows more about that. No, because it's more. They, I feel like as far as like with my group, they never gave a damn about the songs that I've written for other people, <laughs> and like I've heard them say before, like we write too. You didn't write Scrubs, though. Well, me and Tiny did. We collaborated okay, together. Okay. okay. On Scrubs. <laughs> no, I never know. No. Like, but we I collaborated. Feel you, like... I do feel like, you know, I'm not taking anything away from anybody else's songwriters, but they definitely be like, girl, we all write. So I've been to the studio, the plaques. <laughs> they don't care nothing about that. <laughs> ra, 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 they ra. don't care. They don't care about that. So, and I'm very much, um, clear on you know where it's still a group like my vote does not outweigh anybody else's vote but it can be frustrating sometimes if, if I don't necessarily agree with the decisions that they want to make you get what I'm saying and then this is me as an adult you know and as as a as a youngster yeah the same way because I've always been very strong in my opinion mm -hmm. I think that's why um Probably me and Tasha used to bump heads the most when we were younger. Now at this current time, the sisters are like really not getting along whatsoever. But you'll see that on the TV show. On the TV. <laughs> on the TV show, honey. They ain't got nothing to do with me. <laughs> <laughs> like they can't blame me this time. But um, yeah, I have a very, um, I've always stood on my opinion. I don't bite my tongue and, yeah, that doesn't always work for everybody. Do you, I wonder this, like, at what point do you, like, decide, okay, if I keep having my feelings involved in this, we're not going to make no money. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Um. Yeah, you know, you do have to try to put your feelings to the side sometimes Um. because, obviously, at the end of the day, um, it should always be about the group, right? Um. And I feel like maybe that's why it's harder for women 
to keep it going as a group because you know we do get in our feelings mm -hmm. men get in their feelings they just activate it different a lot of these is in jail because they in their feelings oh well i mean yeah i, I agree <laughs> with that but at the same time like i don't why know why is security looked up at me why has security <laughs> looked up at me <laughs> i felt that eye on the left he was like mm. Okay. Fair. We're a lot more <laughs> emotional in how we act out sometimes. That's what I'm saying. Like we yeah. activate it yeah, different. Yeah. We feel more compelled to like, everybody needs to feel my feelings. Yeah. <laughs> you know, whereas men will be like, I feel some type of way about this. I'm going to go over here mm -hmm. and deal with it. Cause I don't even want you to know that I had feelings mm -hmm. yeah. about this. Yeah. So yeah. But, um, I don't know. It's a, I don't know why we can't just get past certain things. With our group, it's just like we always be a stand in standoffs. It's like, <laughs> grr, grr, I don't care. I'm not doing this. So what keeps y'all still doing this? Well, I mean, I can't speak for everybody else, but I would definitely say for me, it became, and that's been since um, we got back together. We got back together, what was it, six years ago? Well, let me say I was you there. Know. Oh, you were? I went to a show. Yes, mm -hmm. I went to a show at the Greek Theater, Ooh. and it was a show where it was y'all, SWV, Jagged Edge, Ooh. and Drew Hill. When was this? I when feel we like were it, young or recent. Were you not there? Oh no, mm -mm. it was a great performance. <laughs> okay, even I if you were, well, what I was gonna say was, I don't know, when was this? Um, I mean, I was far back, so. <laughs> So I really feel like you were there. But what I was going to say was that of everyone who performed, y'all were the only one who had a cohesive performance. Like y'all had the outfits, y'all had choreo, like everybody else. And I'm an SWV fanatic. But they were very much I like. Had to be since that we are, I had to have been there. You were there. Because I feel like I, the reason I put Drew Hill in quotes was because it's like Cisco and Friends. I said that too. <laughs> I said that too. It is so crazy. I saw them perform at uh, Portia's wedding recently. And I was like, who are those people? Like, That's not and Mel they were Kim. like, those are all of the people who have ever performed as Drew Hill. So all the replacement people. And yeah. so I was like, oh, that is like. No, it's very. You're also just like everyone is very young. And you're like, it doesn't, like, I was looking, and I was like, that's not jazz. That, is that yeah. Woody? That's not Woody. That's not No, Nokia. but Woody doesn't even look like himself anymore. Oh, really? Because um, I was like, who is that guy? And they were like, that's Woody. And I was like. Well, Woody was also in Woody. the group feeling some type of way. You know, like, Woody was the, was the group member who I feel like thought he, he thought he could go solo. And he could not go solo. Uh, yeah, well, he looked very much like he I've had like this solo. big hat and these That's big solo behavior. Moon boots. That's solo behavior. I mean, it was giving very much the funk I'm an band. Artist. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yes. Yes. I could see that. Yes. The only one I had recognized was Cisco. But then Jazz came up for like a song and went back and sat down. Well, he's not. He wasn't I don't know healthy what for a while. Well, I guess that's so maybe why he that doesn't perform the whole show. Now, it wasn't as bad as when I saw Shy perform, and in the middle of the show, one of the brothers left the stage. Now, y'all be singing a cappella. You can't do that, because now that, that note is not there. And he, he was like, left? shoom, da -da. Just left. <laughs> and he was gone. And then he came back. Oh, da -da -do, do -do, shoo. And I'm just like, what happened? And then when they finished the song, uh, he was like, my bad, y'all. I had to go to the bathroom. Did ya? Well, Did ya? Well, it happens. I've been on the literally. stage. Listen, <laughs> I, I had a full, like, at South by Southwest one time, I was literally singing, like, da -da. and I was like, oh, I'm going to throw up. Oh no! I'm gonna I'm gonna throw up. And I turned to the drummer and I was like, "Please just keep drumming. If I have to exit, just keep drumming." He's like, "Okay, okay." And then yeah, them fish tacos, they did me dirty. But I finished the show. Well, he did finish. You said he. I came stepped. Back. I stepped off. Yeah, yeah. We both, you know, because the show goes on. The I mean, maybe that's why y'all stay in the group because the show must go on. Oh yeah. Well, that's basically what I was saying. Like what I have learned since in my adulthood it's like now I just really think about it that we have one of those um groups that could be like a legacy group that can perform forever and ever you have hits yeah and then like when I see groups like I don't know like 
the OJs or if, if, if Lionel Richie sometimes come out and does a show, like right. his fans still come out for him. Cool and I'm the gang. Yeah, their fans still come out for them. And I feel like our group has that. And mm-hmm. so I would love to see that um, continue. So with that, I have to like nurture it a little bit. I have to, now I ain't going to say that, that I could be performing all year round just doing escape shows because obviously I got of other course. dreams and different things I'm trying to make happen. But I definitely feel like, you know, I need to nurture it, meaning we had to do so many shows a year at least and keep you put the so much game. into it. Mm-hmm. I feel like at a certain point you're just like, cut the y'all we done put our like life into this like Mm -hmm. now that you're telling me you were 14 we have put our whole life into this Mm -hmm. there's nothing else that we're doing right now that we have put this much time into Mm -hmm. so like let's figure out how to sustain this without killing each other (laughs) well it's not as easy as you make it not why can't we all go to therapy together why it's a lot have y'all done that have y'all gone to counseling Mm, as a group yeah no No, we haven't that's a show you should pitch that oh child no (laughs) i don't think i could take it listen doing that show does anyone in the group does anyone in the group go to therapy i think tamika says she's been going do you go to therapy no really why you say it like it's surprising or something because i feel like at this point it's it's so common. I, I also live in California. Everybody goes to therapy in Yeah, LA. girl, you're in LA. But I'm in Atlanta. You are in ATL. <laughs> but it's just such a helpful thing. And, like, as as you're talking about, like, having to deal with the dynamics of a bunch of broads, like, <laughs> like therapy ends up helping you just, like, not take on other people's mess, which is incredibly difficult not to do mm-hmm. when you – look at your face. <laughs> I mean – I'm not saying that it's not good. I just remember. You're also on Real Housewives of Atlanta. Like, I don't know how you have not gone to therapy just from being on that show. Listen, last year was a very tough year for me. I'm telling you, it was a very tough year for me because I went straight from filming the escape show. So we started in the summer, right? Going all the way through to whatever, end of September. Mm -hmm. And then we started Housewives like the very next week. I did not get any breaks in between. So I did the escape SCBB show. All the way through, did Housewives all the way through up until this end of January. And with no breaks. And I promise you, I was so stressed and so like, rah, that I was cussing everybody out. Like, mm. I promise you, I was going in on people for the entire last part of 2022 on and off camera. Mm-hmm. And you looking at me like, why do I need therapy? I mean, I probably could have used some therapy. No, it's just, I I did try to do therapy once with my mom. And I remember thinking, walking out, I was like, oh, that went well. Like, you know, it was a great talk. And then she started cussing me out and then talked to me for two weeks. So I was like, this therapy doesn't work. It didn't work. That means it worked. It didn't work. She didn't want to go back. It worked because it got her to see things that she didn't want to see and mm-hmm. that's why she was cursing you no, out. No, she was making it seem like I did something to her in the therapy yeah, place. It works. Like, that's no. unfortunate. Because mm-hmm. that's really how it works. Like you our parents get triggered because therapy makes them feel like they weren't good parents because things come out and then it feels like oh, I, you know, you're disrespecting me and it's like, well, mm-hmm. I'm not disrespecting you like we're here together. Oh my God. Like yeah, <laughs> now I'm about to do my own therapy session but I will say like even if that was that, like, I feel like I, on this show, I, I feel like every time somebody comes on this show, I make it a point to be like, have you gone to therapy? And the number one reason is because all black people need therapy. Okay. All black Americans need therapy because. Why do just black people need therapy? <laughs> because black people have uh, PTSD before we even leave the womb. Oh, okay. And we have like trauma in our DNA. So the, yes, look at, can't, do I, do we, do I need to go here? Friend. <laughs> You don't think we do? No. Oh, it's proven. In our DNA? Yeah. Before we even leave the womb? Yes. How? Because emotion and uh, the way that our body reacts to things metastasizes in our cells. So, like, when we have, for instance, like, if you have something, let's say, like, you're afraid of dogs. That started at some point. Okay, at some point you got afraid of dogs because something happened and you may not even remember because you may have been too young, but something happened where your brain Mm -hmm. made a 
a, a timestamp with um, okay. I think it's cortisol is the is actual like. But that's something during that lifetime. So so that's in your cells now. Okay. So now when you have kids, they're going to be scared of that, dogs. Well, it passes on in <laughs> your cells, the trauma. And so you can laugh, but there's like literal studies that have been done about this. And it really says that it really speaks to the fact that like black people, we have such a unique experience, not just in our own like time in life, but we are mm -hmm. carrying. That's when we say we carry the ancestors with us. And okay. so when we talk about therapy, a lot of times when we talk about this whole like generational curses, that's what they mean. I feel you, friend. But OK, so what about when you have mixed race friends like yourself? I am you? not mixed race. You are People keep Why saying that to me. Do I, I need to bring the that. pictures of my mama and my daddy? Okay, you're not mixed race. I'm sorry. <laughs> but let's say for somebody who is mixed race, right? They have the DNA from both sides. You think so, these, these white people also have f***ed up DNA too? No, no, no. Who? These evil white people? Well, right, but that's why I said, why does it just have to be just black people? I'm just saying that black people are the ones who don't be going to therapy. These white folks be in therapy. We the ones who be like, I don't need therapy. I'm good. Not everybody. Not everybody. I'm just saying that they don't have a stigma about it the way we do. I'm not saying I have a stigma about it. Because in the black community for a long time, it's been like, nah, mm -hmm. you can't go to therapy. You crazy. That makes you crazy. So you can't right, do that. Right, right. And then we also have a thing where it's like, like you just said about your mom, like mm -hmm. and my mom is the same way. Like she don't mm -hmm. want to go to therapy because then it's like, who the mm -hmm. hell is this person to tell me about my mm -hmm. life? I don't want to talk to nobody to just come and try and tell me about what I have experienced. Who the hell does she think she is? And then now it's a whole other thing. And I'm like, right, see, right. we was coming here to heal. We ah. was coming here to heal. But I think that ultimately what it is is really just teaching you like ways in which you have learned to behave that aren't necessarily in your best interest. And I think a lot of us mm -hmm. don't even realize that. And so like I can't imagine being in a group with people for this long. There's so many bad tough. habits. <laughs> <laughs> it's tough. I mean, we it's a lot of things that we end up discussing over the course of this show. Um it comes up. What's something you discuss that, that you allegedly somebody <laughs> I ain't trying to get sued now. Mm -hmm. Um that allegedly um somebody was taking money. <laughs> um did that come up because someone brought it up or it came out? Some of the things that were being talked about is something that, you know, we had already um, dealt with uh, or already knew about from a long time ago. But then one of the issues was about somebody getting side money from one of the promoters. Um, and that was something that we learned during the course of filming the show. So it was multiple things. So one thing that came out because they were upset and they start talking about something that already happened that, you know, everybody kind of been had knew, but never really discussed. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing was, you know, something that we learned about during the course of the show. Yeah. How did that get dealt with? It didn't get dealt with. <laughs> it didn't get dealt with. And that's our problem. I feel like we have these arguments, we have these fights and then we just brush things under the rug just to mm. do the show or to get the show done, you know, or because we know we have something that we have to do, but we never really did therapy. That's where the therapy would have helped, right? Coping mechanism. But Re conflict resolution. Right. But I think certain things realistically, I don't know, because I'm kind of different like that. When I know that you've done something wrong to me, and that is to me certain things I shouldn't even have to deal with you anymore. I don't give a damn about the therapy. Like I should just be able to just say, you know what? You're just not the type of person that. I right. Cause like. there's a difference between being like <laughs> funny style and shady. Right. right like exactly. sometimes people move funny and you're like, see that thing you're doing. That's funny right there. Yeah. Did you know that? Yeah. We can discuss it, but certain yeah. things I feel like, and then especially when the other person doesn't own it, you know, it's just like, kind of like it's hard to discuss at that point. Because it's like, at this point, you just think I'm stupid. <laughs> and and, and um, I'm not. So, you know, certain things, it's just hard. It's just hard to get past. And certain things you have to, like, I guess, like, even when you're dealing with family, sometimes you just have to make the decision that I'm going to forgive you anyway, even yeah. though you are dead wrong. Yeah, I'm in it right now. <laughs> right. But it's just like sometimes when things keep happening over and over, you just get tired. 
It's exhausting. Yeah. And you're you're like gaslighting yourself. Mm. <laughs> Cause you're like, I keep showing up for this. Yeah. And I feel like <laughs> and, and I mean, I especially Who feel can like, I run to? Ha. I especially be feeling like I'm playing myself sometimes because I'm just like, this ain't even enough money for me to be dealing with this. Like, I'm like, I can make this money. <laughs> like, you're literally but, making the money sitting here. Well, thank you. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm not charging you for this. No, I'm just no, but you, but you, you manufacture things. But you get my point. I 1,000% get your point. That was me at the real. Right, exactly. I'm not making enough money for this. Exactly. Skirt. Hey, if you're enjoying this episode, which I'm really happy that you are, then you got to check out some of our other episodes of Small Doses. We've got side effects of parents, side effects of Skid Row, side effects of my trip to Kenya, side effects of taking risks. The list goes on and on. It's all here for you at Amanda Seals TV. So make sure you go back, check it out, tell a friend, like, comment, subscribe. Okay, back to the episode. Hey, Candy. And But it's like, because I feel like we have to continue to escape name. Listen, That's I always I say there's like there's three sides to every career choice. Mm -hmm. There's the money, there's the people, there's the content. Mm -hmm. For the most part, two of them joints got to be in place for it to be worthwhile. But ever so often, only one of them is in place mm -hmm. and you still got to do it. Yeah, I feel like it's definitely escape is bigger than me. You know, I feel like it's bigger than either one of us. And um so with that being said, I you know, I feel like we try to keep it going because when all else is gone, you know, if we're not trying to do any other job, we can still like because at the end of the day, we love being on stage. We love performing, you know, for our fans or whatever. Mm -hmm. So like if all else fails, like we can always go do shows and and take take care of our family and be chilling, you know. But the problems of Trying to be on one page with business. That's what makes it so hard for me. I feel like art and commerce always have a tough time coming together. Like just even like as a solo person, like it's just like sometimes it can be very difficult to make like, okay, this is the art I want to make align with like, this is the money I want to make. And like, mm -hmm. how do I do it in the same time right. to do that with three other people mm -hmm. is damn near impossible. Right. And also I also would say like right now, we're just different in different head spaces of what we want to be doing as well. What do you want to be doing? Um, well, well you I feel like you're doing it. Yeah, I, I'm doing what I want to do, but I'm just saying as far as like all the things that I want to do don't necessarily just focus around escape. You know Absolutely what I'm saying? Not. Like, I see the sketches. Like <laughs> I I just have like <laughs> all these things that I'm going after at the same time. So it's like scheduling wise, I may not be able to do all the things that this group member wants to do, mm -hmm. you know, this group maybe member likes the vacation a lot. <laughs> you know, maybe all the stuff that we were trying to do may not align with her schedule, what she's trying to do. So it's like, this member may want to do this. So it's just like each member is in a different space, you know, and sometimes they just don't line up at the same time. Now you've worked with a number of other like very high profile groups that also had a lot of success. Like, mm -hmm. do you feel like there were things that you may have either learned from watching their dynamic or like ways in which you feel like they had a different type of solution finding process or is it just personalities or was it all the same? I feel like it's the same. A lot. Really? I just really don't know because I think, pre-social media no one ever really knew about folks right well i don't really try to go into anybody else's business because you can't really speak on other people's of situations course. but i mean you know i worked with destiny child right before their split mm -hmm. with the latavia latavia and latoya mm -hmm. um so of course you know i kind of was hearing the things that were happening so i mean you know, I feel like every group has its situation it's stuff and their stuff. Right. Yeah. Um, you know, back in the day, you know, TLC with left eye, God rest her soul. Remember, she used to be on TV talking about she challenging her group members to see who could come out with the best solo album. <laughs> like, <laughs> like they always used to have some type of drama. Right. That was very public, you know. Um, so it's a it's a lot of that. It is. In every group. I don't feel like I see. Do we see the same with male groups? 
Um, yeah, some of them. I mean, you know, obviously New Edition has had different changes throughout their career, but they've always kept the group going. Yeah. Um, but you know, they they put out a couple members, a couple of them came back and you know, I guess they are the most public with their stuff. Right. But um cuz I feel like Drew Hill like we just like saw changes but we never knew like why like we all of a sudden know. there was just an album and it was like who these right <laughs> <laughs> and they singing i love you and I'm yeah like, all right yeah they was hitting the move and everything <laughs> the tell me what you want move yeah i was, I was like, like okay so they okay. learned the choreo mm-hmm. and they are in the group now oh. wearing all leather and do rags what well, i like literally went online to research all the new members i was like okay now <laughs> who is that but you know what? That's what the Temps did. Like the Temptations. Right. They kept it going. You see whatever phase of Temptations they have. They like, always used to be like, nobody's bigger than the group. I mean, the name becomes the group, right? Mm-hmm. Like I saw Cool and the Gang recently and it was like, they're playing the songs. I don't think this is cool. This definitely ain't the gang, but they playing ah! the songs. And that's when they start getting older. <laughs> and then you got to remember, it's like all those replacement members, when they start getting older, some of them replacement members have been there in a decade, two decades. They've been So there. they feel like this they group. Right, right, point. right. They've been down. Mm-hmm. They've been down. I really think that it's really interesting to me to hear about, like, the process with new groups because you've done this with your group. Like, mm-hmm. when you started with these new groups, was there anything you went into the new group saying, like, this is what we not going to do, this is the mistake that we not going to make that Escape made? Ooh. I think I probably did that with a couple of the other ones that has already broken up. Yeah. But what were the thoughts? Um. Well, my thoughts are... Eventually, every group is going to fall apart, right? But I think they need to go into it saying, I'm going to give it at least three albums. Okay. I think you should give yourself like a time period to be dedicated to the group. Mm. Even if you have a solo endeavor or whatever, whatever, I think you need to, like, if it's a, if it's a moment where they can say, okay, I know that it'll be okay, for me to check out my other things I want to do at this point, cool. But if you don't really have a realistic conversation that this may come about, then how do you ever tell a group that's making hits, yeah, I'm ready to go. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, it's my time. It's my <laughs> <laughs> like, how do you it's say it? Night. Because everybody else is going to be like, you're crazy. We can't but if they go into it thinking, okay, we're only going to be here for two albums or we're only going to be here for three albums, then we could dedicate ourselves yes. to that and make that happen. But if they start feeling like seeing yeah. you doing, you work a room, you doing secret stuff, ain't telling people, you going in the studio, ain't telling nobody why you there, you you know, you you doing little sideways <laughs> stuff like, you know, it's like, mm, I don't like how you moving. You know, the music business is also just so um shady and people have accepted that like mm-hmm. people have very much just accepted like well this is the music business right so i can do shady things and that's fine because we've all agreed that the that's music the industry is. to me is so different than television and film business how <laughs> the business the people in tv and film is like okay we have your time cards we have this you know you're getting your check it's right? a union yeah 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 <laughs> And um, music industry, yeah, bring that brown paper bag and that cash on over here. Like, you have different people that move in different ways. Let me tell you something. I did a record with Q-Tip. Like, gangsta. I did a song with Q-Tip called Man, Woman, Boogie. Um, and, like, I mean, he was like, come to the studio. I want you to sing the hook. So I was like, all right. I came to the studio. I'm hype, right? So I come to the studio. I'm like, getting down is something to do between woman and man. <laughs> okay, so we do the song. I think it may have been... A good two years later, we were like at a restaurant chit chatting, mm-hmm. and I was like, uh, he asked me something about so, somehow the song came up. I was like, you know, I never I, was I supposed to get paid for that, and he was like, you never got paid for that, and I'm like, I, I don't, I was I, I don't know, was I supposed to? Uh, yeah, <laughs> he was like, yes, but like I didn't know mm-hmm. the business of the music business. Right. 
So and especially I, like for writers, they be getting got all the time. Like I've been oh, seeing like writers striking recently. Like writers, writers being be upset like, because <laughs> like a lot of times I don't know why I thought the writers royalties. were the ones that were gonna get their money because they were there. Well, no, it depends on like what royalties. Well, you know now things have changed with the way the royalties are being paid out because you know the streaming and whatever. Like back, it was a little bit more like okay, the label knew they had to pay out. But when I say they get got, I'm meaning like. Say, for instance, when they turn those split sheets in, they may not be getting their their rightful share or stuff Listen, like that. my man is a producer and an engineer, mm-hmm. and he's like, you know, he's like, register a song and take the whole credit for the song. Like, mm-hmm. I didn't produce the whole beat. Right. <laughs> yeah, people are doing So you that. have to, like, be watchful and mindful. Mm-hmm. But that's its own thing. Like, that's administration. Like, a lot of people, I feel like music business requires so much more admin mm-hmm. than TV and film. Yeah. And because the they don't, they don't really do be on it. <laughs> yeah, like I was with CSAC yeah. and I didn't know that I needed to like register my song. I mean, I knew I needed to register my songs, but I didn't understand why mm-hmm. it was important. And it was like, that's how you get a check. Mm-hmm. Oh, got it. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Yeah. So the business of music, you feel like is just so willy nilly. Oh, yeah. This is all over the place. Now that you've done other ventures. Yeah, because it's like, Everything else is way more professional. <laughs> like <laughs> music industry, everybody is just kind of like, yeah, they everybody's a gangster. Everybody wants to. And you from '90s that. music industry too, yeah, so it's night and day different. I feel like there's a different movement now with the streaming and whatnot. So it's mm-hmm. it's like you can't really make money the same way. So I don't know if there's as many gangsters involved. I feel like the yeah. gangsters be the rappers now. They're like, it doesn't make sense for me to promote it. I'm just gonna rap it. Well, yeah, or either they may not be paying the royalties out. Like, they collecting all the royalties because they put it up through their streaming service, and once they receive the money, they ain't been paying nobody. There it is. We just cracked a code. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, so tell me another, like, I really like what you said about, like, when you went, when you were looking at these new groups, that the thought process of, like, make a commitment, like, to the group. Yeah, like, what's another, what's another, like, tip? Because, you know, the thing is, once if you're sitting here saying there's no girl groups out here, that means that there's, like, a whole bunch of girl groups that are, like, forming right now. They're in somebody's <laughs> house, like... She's right. Mm-hmm. Let's make one right now. Mm-hmm. No, you off. You off. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> like, so, like, um, I know they want to know. Well, I would also say... From the icon. Don't let... Don't let me get in say, the middle okay. of the business. I don't think nobody's man should be managing nothing in the group. <laughs> nobody's significant other should not be in the group's business. Why? Because they go interest. messing. Because they got you thinking that you better than the rest of the group. Or either they're just, they're thinking for self. Their selves and you, maybe that's it. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> their selves, though. <laughs> right. Um, it's also a conflict of interest. It's definitely a conflict of interest. It's just not unless good. we all f- you. It's a conflict of interest. Yeah, it's a conflict of interest. So I, I personally would say stay away from that. Now, would you say that? Um, would you say the same thing about a family member? Yeah, I would say that too. Because I mean, if it's a conflict of interest, it's just a conflict of interest. I hear that. I hear mm-hmm. that. Now. When it when you say don't let men get in the mix of the group, I will also, even though I have never been in a girl group, but I know mm-hmm. people who have, mm-hmm. I would also like to add a caveat of like, you got to do what you're doing and handle your business and also handle your relationship and not let that infringe upon the responsibilities that you have to your business. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah, and that's the other thing. It's like some people start like, especially with women. Well, I they got- may start messing, you know, getting getting all lovey dovey with somebody, and then they drop everything they're supposed to be doing. That is so annoying when they be like, "Oh, I don't want to show." And I tell women that in business, period. Look, you got to be about your bag the same way that men are about their bag. Uh, women, women sometimes they fall in love and they be like, "Call." Um, girl, I ain't gonna be able to make it to the studio right now. Da, 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 da. Guy, he's gonna tell his girl, hey, babe, I'm I'll gonna be, be right back. I'm gonna go get this bag. I'm coming right back. Girl, she wanna um, call in sick. She wanna call in late. She wanna put everything second to whoever this dude she's <laughs> right now. 
That is so annoying to me in any business because we got to be just as much about our money and our bag as they do. Because then when the relationship falls apart, if it falls apart, it's like, man, you just let your fall to the wayside. Can I just make a side point? This has nothing to do with uh, girl group dynamics. But have you heard about this uh, new thing of the stay at home girlfriend? What? What is it? Okay, that lets me know I'm not crazy. You saw her tell face? Tell me, tell me what it means. I've been seeing these on the TikToks. Have you seen these, Jamie, on the TikToks? It's the, like the, a day in the life of a stay-at-home girlfriend. And they're always like starting the day with like, first I make coffee for me and Brad, or I make coffee for me and Tamika. They're housewives, but they're girlfriends. With, with no real uh, connection to his bag. So if he decides to drop you, then you are back at your mama's house with that same coffee cup. Listen. <laughs> Hi, girl. You do not Listen, get out of here. I, there was a video posted of a sister, and she was like a day in the life of a stay-at-home girlfriend, and she was on vacation. We didn't see the person, but she was on vacation, and she was just showing like that this is her lifestyle. And I put in the comments, wow, ambition looks different these days with the upside-down smiley face. And girl, they ate me up. Why? <laughs> Why? Amanda, you are so bitter. Why are you hating? You're supposed to be empowering black women. Why are you empowering tearing black women down? Empowering black women to do what? To sit around and wait up for a dude to take care of you if he's not going to marry you? She was a you? lesbian. Or for a girl to take care of you and she's not going to marry you. I I have friends that are lesbians too. Mm-hmm. And I've seen it very much so where the one that was taking care of the other one was clearly out here in these streets, kicking it, meeting other people. And one day Just even told it. um the I girl like, yeah, um, yeah, I decided I'm going to get with this one. You can move out at this time. <laughs> like you don't want to be in that situation where, Somebody can control you with the bag because regardless of what anybody says, that other person is controlling the situation. You're a tag along. Yeah, you're a tag along and you are pretty much at the mercy of them. Like they get to tell you how much they giving you. They get to when we leaving. Yeah, they get to when we coming, when we going. Yeah, they get to dish out your allowance. I I don't know. You have to tell me what I'm spending there or what I'm no. No, it doesn't work like that. And I don't understand how anybody can go through life like that because eventually when that person decides, if they decide to move on, you might get lucky. Then they y'all may stay together forever. But at the, at the end of the day, if you only the girlfriend, it's not giving me much hope for you, honey. <laughs> I mean, listen, I my thing is like, I'm be the girlfriend, but have your own situation like mm-hmm. if you're on if your situation is just being the girlfriend that's mm-hmm. not secure there's mm-hmm. nothing founded on that right mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. i feel like there's i think if you put all that energy into yourself and going after the things you want you will get it i'll give a prime example of myself <laughs> i remember i was dating this dude um he had money okay and you know, <laughs> when i was he got um, money. when i was young you know um actually it was probably around the time the group was, you know, falling apart or whatever. Okay, so like early twenties. Yeah. Okay. Early twenties or whatever. Um, anyway, and he was like and I was like I was stressed. I was like, Oh, what am I gonna do? I need to um, you know, I need to be trying to figure this shit out. Like mm-hmm. that was when I was telling Tiny, come on, let's try to do a dual project. I'm like, let's go write with these different people, let's make demos, let's do something, you know, to try to work on another yeah. project while this, this is, is falling fizzling. apart. Yeah. So I remember every day I was like having to go to the studio and he was like, you don't even have to worry about that. I got you this, this and that. I was like, yeah, no, I'm going to the studio Good for you. So anyway, I, um, I actually caught his cheating. Well, I didn't catch him. A friend of mine gave me some information and told me what he was doing. I was, I was told my mom, I was like, I was like, I'm not messing with him anymore. And blah, blah, blah. And she was like, girl, you gonna leave that million dollar man? Uh, <laughs> you gonna leave that million dollar man? And um, at that time, I did not have millions, but I told my mama, I said, I'm gonna make that money. I told my mama that. And Yo, I, can you, I, did we years, capture her face? Like the face you just made? I was serious about it too. I was like, yeah, I'm gonna <laughs> make that money. And my mama was like, oh, you just, I don't know what's it to you. And I remember I dropped his sure enough. And I definitely within like two years of that, I had the same 
a couple millions that he had showed me that was in his uh, little savings thing that he had. So I was like, if you focus on you and go after it, like we put that same energy into us because see a lot of us, we tend, we nurture a lot of, of course. men to be the success that the they best are. selves. Right. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, a lot of women do that. That's of course. What we do. And there's nothing wrong with that. Or, and I don't want to just, uh, you know, say to men, it's uh, you nurture whoever you're with. Yes. Your to, partner. Yeah. Your partner to be their best selves and to be successful or whatever. But I'm like, if they're not returning, reciprocating that energy into the things that you want and the things that you going after in life, then it's like you putting all that into them and then you see them blow up and then what? Kind of like um, waiting to exhale when, you know, and um, mm. Mm. Angela's, Angela uh, Bassett, uh, I answered the her, phone. Yeah, she did all that. It blew them up. I put this her. company together. Exactly. And then what? And then she was left Let to for a white girl. Right. So my point being all that sitting around just being a kept girlfriend. Yeah. No. You Not, know, I mean, but it's to each his own. We always have to say that to each his own. And that's what makes you feel good. And that's what you like. And I'm not saying that, you know, women should be kept. I'm not right. Saying I think that that's the, too. I think that's what people misconstrued when I said that they were like, what? who wants struggle? We're not promoting struggle, sis. And I'm like, well, I'm not promoting struggle, but I think that there's something to be said for us at this point in history really having the most access to our mm-hmm. own security that we've ever had mm-hmm. as women. Like mm-hmm. the fact that you have this many companies, right. And mm-hmm. you are able to be the one deciding about how they operate. Like mm-hmm. women couldn't have checking accounts as recent as 1975. Like that's when we were that able to crazy. That's when insane. you think about it. <laughs> like, and to bring it back to therapy, we couldn't go to therapy and have our records private. Your husband would have a side call with your mm-hmm. therapist to find out what you was talking about in right. therapy. <laughs> like, right, if right. you see Mad Men, then you know. Right. But like, it's like, so I think for me, I just be feeling like, stand up, mm-hmm. stand up. You know what I'm now, <laughs> unless this is like some, uh, you know, situation where he's already put millions in an account <laughs> with your, just your name on it. <laughs> just your name. The caveat. Yes. Yeah, that's different. I had another situation. Tell me. My younger years okay. before marriage, clearly. Candy Burris. Uh, the younger child, years. You know, I, I lived a life before I was married. Okay. Did I? But I anyway. want to do a whole podcast. It's called Men and Managers about uh, uh, my previous life. Uh, who child? I'll invite I did you that. on. So anyway, <laughs> um, this guy that I was dating, and at the time I was single, but I did. I had a child. I already had Riley at the time, okay. but she was young. I remember he was like, you know, I want you to have a, ch- a child with me and I'll put up. That was the pitch? Yeah, like he literally sat down out this whole discussion how you wanted me to have a kid with him and he was going to put $100,000 in account right up front. I was like, $100,000? What is that going to do <laughs> for me? That was no money. I was like, first of all, I don't like this. Do I look like I should just be a baby mama to you? No. I was highly offended. That's okay. the other thing. Like, what made him feel like that was like a cat, a course that you were willing to go? Yeah, I was like, did I look like I just want to be a that's baby a mama? Nick Cannon proposal? That's not. Yeah. Oh like, my gosh, I, I, no, that's my homie. Well, I want to. I want to. My homie too. Like that doesn't mean it don't make sense. But, but it that's just, what it, it was is. just weird. It's for like, me. do you want? It's a. It's a transaction. Yeah, I was just like kind of like weirded out by the whole situation. I was just like, yeah, like this was not cool to me. I was highly offended and upset by it. That he felt like that was my goals in life, just to, you know. It's weird to me that someone could hang out with you and then come to that conclusion, though. I, I, it was weird to me, too. Because I had a whole house that I had gotten <laughs> on my own. I was young, but I still was, you know, had things, you know. So I was just like, that is not, like, you would have to be sitting, like, having millions in an account with just my name on it that you can't take back that would make me even consider consider just sitting around like what does this got to do for me With i think a lot of human i think that a lot of women especially you know you hear all these people when they like oh she struck it big when girls have get pregnant by certain guys yes they don't realize that a lot of times um 
when women have children by high profile men, they don't always get the type of child support that we hear, right? Every now and then you may hear somebody get some real child support. Right. But on average, somebody like say for instance, even if somebody, let's say in Atlanta, mm-hmm. if somebody got like five thousand dollars, that's a lot of money in child support, right? Five thousand times. But that ain't really no money when you think about it. If that's all you're living off of. And if that person's making millions a year. Yeah, like that ain't really no money because if you get in a, uh, a nice place, even if you got $10,000 a month, if you had a nice place, you you going out to eat, you doing it, like that money is gone quick. You, you know what I'm saying? But people think that's an actual life choice. Like I have had a child with this rich man it's, and now I am a kept person. And those years go by quick. And when those years go by, <laughs> then what? He could just say, I'm not giving you no more money because the, the kid is grown and what you doing? I mean, listen, on my 18th so, birthday, my father sent a child support check that had happy birthday in the message. He couldn't wait. Memo. Couldn't wait. All right. Couldn't wait. Well, let me ask you this. And this then we're conversation play went totally with left. That's how it goes. <laughs> That's how it goes. Um, I'm going to ask you a question. Then we're going to play a game. What do you think is the number one? How do you feel like most girl groups come into the into the situation? Like, what is the mindset? Like, what is the fantasy that you feel like most girl groups come into it with? Oh, everybody comes into it just like having a dream. Oh, I want to, you know, have a number one record. I want to be platinum and sell millions of records and have millions of fans and millions of dollars. Right. That's the dream. Mm-hmm. And then what do you think is the first thing that starts to crumble from mm. that dream? It's the outside people coming in. Oh, you're saying the first thing they drum. Like. Yeah, like when, like, because uh, I feel like we come in, like, we're going to have a hit record. We're going to be best friends. We're going to have, we're going to tour oh, the world. You start arguing. You just definitely <laughs> start arguing about any and everything. What dress and- to wear to an award show. Did you just really say that? We honestly, <laughs> she's like, we didn't argue. <laughs> She wasn't even talking to us at the time. And she had a separate stylist, honey. So nobody, it was not an argument. <laughs> it was not an argument. We tried to have the same stylist. We did not. The stylist had a conversation. They told her we was wearing, what is it? Uh, Rhinestones. D- or like diamonds and silver yeah, gold or whatever. Similar to this. And she said she was going to have on gold. I mean, she didn't. Her stylist. The stylist. Did. So that was not an argument. That was a decision. A decision of your own that ended up in the fans took took it a whole different way. Well, baby, the fans is always gonna take it and and I was so like really I was getting so annoyed at that time because I kind of felt like we were like it was it was being some very much served to the fans as if we were trying Who was serving to. it to them the media or just. PR? I felt like the PR of my group member, <laughs> I oh, really? felt like, or okay. her team, mm-hmm. I felt like they were trying to give a perception Dis- yeah. that we purposely tried to leave her out of the loop with whatever we were doing at the time. Well, one thing I appreciate about, appreciate about you is you going to come on the internet and be like, are y'all listening? That was not the case. <laughs> That was absolutely not the case. I, I do not want to be caught up in this distortion of the facts. No, I honestly was trying to not comment on it that much at the time. And it was just getting, it was trying to, it was kind of being a lot because I just kind of felt like we have so much that is going to come out and air when the show airs. But it was like, you should have heard our group members talking. We was like, oh, I can't wait till they can see this show so they can know. <laughs> We are not the problem. <laughs> so are you excited about the show? Mm. Ooh. Well, I have not seen it. I, I, is that normal that you don't see the cut? No, yeah, we never get to see it okay. until like the week that it airs. But I this this okay, this weekend is the first episode that's gonna air. The network, our uh a, the agent, whatever, who's also my agent, he's um they are purposely uh, and Mona. They are purposely not showing us the episode because they know we have to do interviews together these next couple of days and they don't want anybody to get like upset and not want to do the interviews. So they have not even shown us the first episode yet. How do you live in that? Like that's a dynamic. I don't think I, I, not, I don't think I know that I could not manage that dynamic where people are keeping something from me. Yeah. Well, I was, um, I almost cussed his 
the other day. Because he was like, uh, you can't watch the show. And then he going to tell Jamie that she could go over there and watch the show because we trying to do speak on it before this yeah. weekend. And telling her she can go watch the show, but she can't take her phone to record it. But I thought he was saying, like, I couldn't take my I said, who the f*** are you talking to? Like, I'm a grown woman. Don't tell. How you going to tell me <laughs> that I, he was like, well, I wasn't talking to you. Y'all was talking to you. She grown, too. She is. It's like, what the hell you mean? Like, we got to go sneak and video our, sh- my group show. <laughs> like, that. I was so hot. <laughs> and he was like he had to go smoke because I had made him upset. I was like, but it's not cool, man. I get really frustrated in these situations, just like anybody. I know a lot of people are like, how do you continuously do this? Um, I think the pros have outweighed the cons for me as far as like, you know, being able to connect in my, with my fans in such a yeah. way and really like opening up the world to yes, you know, getting to know who I am. So that in itself is worth something. Mm -hmm. But when I tell you the stress, there's a lot of stress involved in being on reality TV, especially with my group members, because I, I take things to heart in a different way with my group members than more so than what I do with the girls on housewives. Oh, I would. Of course. Right. It's like the things when they say something to me, like the emotions and the anger is like, You know, it's that. You know what I mean? Oh, uh, <laughs> but y'all known each other since y'all y'all have yeah. Y'all have like thirty year conflicts. Mm-hmm. So like we do every time that comes up, it's, you're pulling from so far back. The f- out of me is when we we have not discussed a thing, <laughs> and then it's still coming. Hi, how you doing? <laughs> I'm great. How are you? This is so annoying. That's not, I can't, but we know we have to do this stuff together. So it's like, we can't be around each other and not even greet, I suppose. But (laughs) (laughs) I suppose, (laughs) but I commend you. Mm -hmm. I commend you. Here's a random question before we play this game. Do you feel like in your relationship, you handle conflict the same way that you do with your group? With my husband? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. My husband and I, we really don't even argue that often. When we do, because, I mean, I am a pro of being very, um, I'm laid back until I'm not. Okay. Okay. So, and a lot of things don't bother me. So I pick and choose my battles, meaning, like, if it doesn't really bother me, I just let him have it. I'm a Taurus. He's a Leo. So oh, his, that's a lot. He's very, okay. very strong in everything he wants. So most of the time I just, you know, try to let him have it. But if it's something that I feel strongly about, yes. then I push the point. And sometimes we can have like serious, you know, like I'll have a serious blow up, you know, at one point and then, but he's very good at wanting to talk about it later. And I will not talk. Oh, you're one of those. I'm one of those. I get in my head and uh, and then I'm like, I don't even want to talk. Nah, because I feel like, <laughs> especially if you catch me when I'm feeling it the most, and then because I feel like I'm going to say something that's very disrespectful. Oh. So I just be like, you have to let me calm down, walk away. Okay. And then come back. So okay. he's good at like, you know, timing that timing out. that out when. I get to that level, but it's very rare with him that I get to that That's level. Dope. But we do have our moments. Everyone, we all do. Yeah, we have. Um, I think we do very well for us to be very strong. Um, That's a lot of energy. Strong Taurus and Leo. It's a lot. Yes, of very, very. Yeah, and he's very. He wants everything his way. Yes, most men do. But I don't even yeah. think that's a Leo thing. Ugh, I don't know. Most men are like, I'm, I'm here. Now what? Yeah. Well, he's very, um, <laughs> he's very strong about his opinions. So, um, you know, I just try to like let him have it. But I guess with my group members, I've been better at it in my older years mm-hmm. of trying to um, pick the battles, you know, whatever, you know, De- deflect. Uh, I had decided 
when was diffuse, this? defer. The year that we, um, what was that? That was that a year ago? You know, well, going on two years ago. That the versus year when we did the versus with SWV. Yep. That I was gonna have a year of yes with them. Okay, Shonda. Meaning. <laughs> You know, I felt like they were always trying to make it seem like I was the problem or I was stopping them from doing stuff. So, or I was not being cooperative. Mm -hmm. So I started, I told myself, because I had took it like a little break where I, they were just doing the shows, just three of them and all of that stuff. So I wasn't really. Oh, I didn't even know that. Yeah, I wasn't really. After we did the big tour, it wasn't any fallout or nothing, but mm -hmm. I was. Just Busy. had other things yeah. that I wanted to do. And I knew they still wanted to perform and make money, mm -hmm. which is important. So, but anyway, they asked me to, so I said, I am going to just let them have it every time. See how it goes. How'd it go? They arguing with each other. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, meaning <laughs> I was like, okay, you know, y'all want to do the verses? I didn't really, at the time, I didn't really want to do the verses because I, I felt like we didn't have anything set up for ourselves to benefit from it wasn't like no new single new album dropping oh, okay. new tour dropping it to wasn't anything to like because everybody that was doing the verses that really benefited had something right after that right after to yeah. promote so I'm like what are we promoting what are we doing nothing but okay <laughs> we can do this year of yes <laughs> year of yes let's go so then they wanted um they had a manager that they wanted to use I didn't even know this person, but sure. Year of yes. Year of yes. This is what you guys want. Okay. Then, oh, this is what we want for business management. Now, <laughs> I already knew that person, but they weren't my financial manager, but I knew them. But if that's what you guys want, so be it. <laughs> <laughs> Go right ahead. And then as the year went on, year and a half, it, yeah, it went to, especially this past summer. So yeah. we're back to, so now we're back to a year. We, of, yeah. We don't no. have a manager. Okay. Well, well, one member has a manager. Yes. She has a manager. Right. Right. That's the great way to put it. She has a manager. Yeah. The rest of us, we, our agent is just handling everything for us now. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's, it, yeah, no. That's it became, and that's sucks. the weird thing when one person has more of a relationship or, you know, more communication doing things like it starts feeling like, okay, who's, who's who, the point person? Yeah. Are you only looking out for this person? Mm -hmm. Like what is going on? You know? And it just was a lot. Mm, yeah. So when it comes to the girl groups, any advice? <laughs> Don't do it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. Um, I always well here. Actually, you know what? Because you kind of answered that. Would you do it again? Yeah, I wouldn't change the things that I've done in my life. I I appreciate every step of the way. What would you have done differently? Oh my gosh! Well, first of all, with our group, I definitely would have wanted us to write more in the beginning. Okay. Um, not to say I mean I appreciate everything that Jermaine was doing for us or whatever. But I felt like we should have been trying to write more, especially on the second and third album. Um, but we was he was let us write like a line here, a line there. You get yeah. like two percent on this song. Three, it ain't really. Oh, so enough. more so for like the bag of it all. Hell yeah! Because yeah. after I, you know, Once left you, the group, when I really started writing, writing for people, uh -huh. and I started seeing those royalty checks, I'm like, <laughs> we should have been doing this. <laughs> on top of that, I feel like we should have been performing and touring more mm. at a younger and when back in the heyday of our younger years like we didn't really tour a lot we didn't we right. did like one tour on the first album one tour on the second album we didn't tour at all on the third album we did some spot dates but not like a full tours you know but why we did not like being on the road like that oh. like we would go do what we had to do to do the promotions or for like that first like for three months and then we'd be done Whereas, like, really, that's where an artist makes their money. Yeah. And, but, I mean, and their I fans. Like, that's where you really build your core. Yeah, but there was a lot of things that, you know, went wrong. Um, one of our accountants had got us for some money when we were young. Yeah, it was a mess. 
um those things but you know i guess we had to live and learn because we were still young coming into this Mm -hmm. so those things i guess you know would have couldn't be prevented that's not something you have to learn along the way unfortunately but yeah there's a lot of things that i probably would have changed um a lot actually (laughs) well we just got two of them and those were gems Now, we're going to go into a special segment for our Patreon, The Amandaverse. You know, Candy, you are somebody who is a visionary, okay? We have Mm -hmm. seen you just decide in your mind, I'm going to do this thing, and now it's happening, right? Okay. And so we're going to play a little game for our Patreon called Building the Band, where Candy is going to build your dream girl group. Okay. Also, you're going to give them the best producer that you could find. We're going to have you put together the situation that you could have had or that you could have. Okay. All right. Let's try it. And you're not going to offend anyone. It's okay. I can Mm. see it in your eyes. First page. Candy, it's been such a treat. Such a treat. Y'all, Candy came to my house. Candy came to my house. Her house is beautiful, y'all. Thanks, Ken. Thank you very much. We did a seven month renovation. <laughs> Ooh, really? Yeah. Yes, of the kitchen. So I'm actually going to show you all the kitchen just so I can make it myself feel like the money was worth it. Mm. Um, but the show, you pushed through, you made it happen. Mm-hmm. When can they watch? Where can they watch? Sunday nights on Bravo. What was it? What time is it on? Nine o'clock or nine thirty? So this Sunday night, I think it comes on at what? I mean, people going to stream. Yeah, it's coming on on Bravo. Sundays. And what's the name of the show? It's called um, SWV and Escape, the Queens of R&B. There you have it. SWV and Escape, the Queen. Did, was there a crown ever decided by the end? Mm-mm. We had a debate about um, who should end the show. Hmm. Yeah. Well, we got to watch the show to know how that debate ended up. Exactly. There you have <laughs> it. <laughs> who would you think? <laughs> Who would end the show? Well, who ended the show that you saw us do? You said you saw us do a Y'all show. Y'all did. Oh, okay. Y'all ended the show. <laughs> Which honestly surprised me because I was like, oh. It surprised you? It did because I had seen them like be tour. Like, I feel like they've consistently been touring. Like, I've seen them a number of times. Were they ending? They were, well, they were always the second to last. Oh. Um, they were always the second to the last. And then I knew that this was, they kept saying, Escape's first show's back. Their first show's back. And so I was like, oh, they're coming back and they're coming back right before, because it was Keith Sweat. That was who was headlining. Keith Sweat mm. was headlining. And I don't think went, I was on the show. Uh, 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 uh. No! <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That's Keith Sweat. I love Keith Sweat. No, y'all were, um, but I, I don't know if you were on that show or not. I don't remember you missing, but Mm -hmm. what I do remember is that regardless of the dynamics and the bullshit and all of the tomfoolery that therapy could help, you guys really were on stage as a cohesive unit. And I remember (laughs) being thoroughly impressed and being like, they was rehearsing. Like, that's what said. That's what I literally said in my mind. Like, they was at rehearsal. Well, thank you. Did you all rehearse? Uh, Yeah, we do rehearse. There you go. Not enough. I feel like we should rehearse more. Oh, we do rehearse. Well, listen, you we take pride in our shows. Now that's something we do. You weren't out there looking like Dipset on verses, okay? Ah! Did you just <laughs> ah! shout to Harlem? 